All right, guys, welcome back. It's currently around 10 o'clock, and so that means I've done around six hours of coding. Uh, we finally finished building the project. Um, and for those that are new, basically, I'm doing this AI journey, and every week I build a different AI um, machine learning project, right? So this week, we're basically building an image classifier, and we're training it on the Cypher 10 um, data set. So basically, we're, we're trying to get a model to be able to predict if this is a dog, this is a cat, bird, whatever. That's the whole point of it. So if you've been following along in the past, uh, I used to upload every two days. And I'll update you guys on like the progress I've made, what week I'm on, stuff like that. Because um, I got really busy with applying to internships, doing leak code and all that other stuff. I basically couldn't upload as frequently, so I'm going to be uploading once every week. And basically right now we're on week four because I took a bit of a, a tiny break. Um, and we just finished week four, we're going into week five tomorrow. But what I've done is uh, week four's task is to build an AI image classifier. And that's what I've done, uh, a ResNet model. We basically trained on the Cypher 10. So basically you give the model an image out of 10 different classes and it'll basically predict what class that image belongs to. So we have a dog class, cat, bird, horse, and the image basically gets classified based on the different patterns and edges the model's been trained to detect. And also the reason why this video is coming out a bit late is because I was kind of struggling to like actually get work done in this room. Um, I think it's because my room is too small. Maybe my desk is too small. I don't really know. But when I go to the uni campus and I go into like an engineering building, I can fully lock in for hours. In my room is kind of shaky. Some, some days I can do like six hours. Some days I can't even do two. So I'm definitely going to clear out my whole room. <laughs> you guys will probably see at the end of this video. I'm going to like empty the whole room and reorganize everything. I'm going to buy new stuff, make a new desk setup. And I will post a video on the desk setup. That will probably be on Instagram. So if you want to check that out, follow my Instagram. You'll probably see the video there. Yeah, so for the future uploads, I will aim to upload every Thursday on a different project. Um, when the projects are over, I'll probably be doing vlogs on just uni stuff and update stuff like that. But yeah, if you're an engineering student and you like videos like these, like you like vlogs, um, I'll be making a lot of videos throughout the year. I'm going into third year, so I'll probably have a decent amount of advice to give to you guys if you're new to engineering. And yeah, um, just hit the subscribe button if you want to follow along. And I'll see you guys after going to the gym. All right, so for those that are interested in the whole AI ML stuff, these are basically, I'm basically going to go through the project I've done. Uh, but before we start, if, you're, if your project's on the convolutional neural networks or, or you're using the ResNet model architecture, you need to watch these videos. Like, this ResNet video is really good and it explains the whole concept of the ResNet block in just like 10 minutes. It's really, really important. This video, like, I was looking for a good video on optimizers. I finally found one. This guy literally has like, the illustrations for the different optimizers and why some are better than the others so this is a really good video too and our convolutional neural networks explained this is like but if you watch this video you just fully like understand how the whole convolutional neural network works and you never need to watch another video so definitely watch these three if you're doing a similar project and yeah let's just really quickly go through it so by the way all of this is going to be on the github um, my GitHub is going to be on my link um, in the description so you can find it there. But if we look through, we just imported some libraries, obviously we're using PyTorch. Um, we split the data into train and test data, so we can't use the same data for training and testing because the machine learning model can obviously uh, learn the data and learn the patterns and kind of like, lie, like cheat and get really good accuracy. So that's why we need to separate it. We have data loaders to load it in batches. It makes it more efficient for training. Here we're just visualizing some of the data to see what we're working with. As you can see, we have 10 classes here. I think it's printed above. We have airplanes, automobiles, birds, cats, dogs, deers, whatever. So this whole model is basically getting an image. You're showing an image and it's trying to classify where this image belongs to using the different edges and patterns it can detect. Yeah, so like, there's no way this is a bird. It looks like a, looks like a camel dog. Yeah, so this is what we're working with. It's 32 by 32 um, pixels, and it's kind of stretched out. That's why it looks so bad right now. But to the model, it actually doesn't look this bad. It's just defining the resonant block that we're using. You'll understand this if you watch the video. 
the first video on the ResNet blog. Here we're just stacking the blocks. We're just creating the whole um, tiny ResNet. So we have some layers for um, the basic blocks. We have an input layer, which is be this, and we have an output layer, and a pooling layer just before the um, fully connected layer. Okay. This just to show the amount of parameters we have. It's quite big. I mean, it has 700,000 parameters. I mean, uh, in today's age, I think most of the large LLMs we have today have like billions of parameters, if not trillions. I mean, I'll probably put a stat on the screen. I can't really remember. But yeah, we have the training loop, evaluation loop as usual. So right now I'm recording this on my MacBook, but um, I set this to, to two um, iterations, two epochs, because my, my MacBook couldn't handle 20. It started blowing up, like it just it just can't handle it, right? And I'm using my CPU right now, so it took 500 seconds just to do two iterations. So I would have been waiting for like about an hour just to finish this, right? So I just moved to my PC. I'll show you guys the stats on my PC and how much better it performed. So yeah, so let's move over to the PC and see how the RTX 4070 performed. All right, guys, so on my PC now, uh, as you can see here, this is the same training function we're just looking at on the MacBook. Um, but if you scroll down, if you run this training function, like here, and we scroll down, you can see it's going to start training it. And right now it's for 20 iterations. So it will take quite a long, it won't, not, it won't take that long compared to the MacBook. But as you can see here, the 4070 is actually being used. Like it's using, well, it, it's in spikes, it's quite weird but it's using 97% see max max usage so that's really cool um and it takes around i think i did it last minute it took around five minutes for the whole thing so that's quite good uh, if we keep moving forward i'll just leave this to run so you guys can see that if we keep moving forward with the same stuff as before but here i actually wanted to test it and the accuracy is 90 percent, which is really high like I and mean, 90% for a convolutionary neural network is like really, really impressive, right? So that's good. Um, here we can just plot some of the curves, see the accuracy. Fusion matrix are really good for seeing how your model's actually predicting stuff. Um, as you can see here, um, yellow is really, really good and purple is really bad. So you can see for a lot of it, it's yellow. So it predicted airplane correctly, automobile predicted it correctly. Bird cat and dogs were really really green so that means that it wasn't as good as the rest and as we can see here if we scroll down we can see cat has 78 percent accuracy dog has 84 percent accuracy so those are really the ones that are most misclassified and if we look down here we can just see what the the worst uh, images the model couldn't classify so here the model thought this cat was a dog and here it thought this cat was a dog but i mean like even I can't even tell if it's a cat or a dog. So that makes sense, right? So if you guys want to try this out, check it out. It's going to be on the GitHub repo. You can have a look. And yeah, let's get back to the video.